Today I'm going to show you the quickest and easiest way to convert any bike to an e-bike and you can do it using this, the Pika Boost 2 from Live All and it will work with any bike type as long as the tyre is between 25 and 65 millimetres wide. As with all of these review videos, I will have to do a bit of a disclaimer here. This is what I believe is known as a dedicated video, but that said, I'm going to be as objective as I possibly can and simply just go through the features on the Peak Boost here so that you can make up your own mind if this is the gadget for you or not. The way it all works is very simple. All you need to do is attach the Peak Boost to the seat pin of your bike using these four bolts and the special little security Allen key. And this is a 250 watt motor that's connected to this little friction wheel here. The friction wheel rests on your bike tire. And then what happens is the motor drives the friction wheel and the friction wheel drives your bike wheel. And it just gives you a little bit of assistance. The whole system weighs six pounds or three and a half kilos. So it's not putting a massive amount of weight on your bike. From flat, the battery will charge in around three hours. And once it is fully charged, Live All claim it will give you a range of up to 70 kilometers. Another great thing about the battery is that it is replaceable. There's a little uh, cover here. You can remove that and take the battery out. And that means when the battery inevitably reaches the end of its life, you can simply replace it. You don't have to throw the whole unit away. Another great thing about the battery is that it's also a power bank. There's a little USB out on there, so you can use it to charge up your gadgets, your phone, your cycling computer, your camera, your evil robot, whatever you fancy. The unit has four modes. There's workout mode that gives you some added resistance for a bit of a workout. There's eco mode that only gives you assistance on the climbs and obviously that extends the range of the battery. There's power assist mode that intelligently gives you assistance when you need it. And then there's cruise mode that provides a consistent level of assist. The Peak Boost is controlled via a combination of the smartphone app and the little remote control that's supplied with the unit that sits on the handlebars of your bike. And what you do is select the mode on the app and then you use the controller on the handlebars to fine tune everything. As you can imagine, the whole thing is waterproof, so you can go riding in the rain or on a day like today if that's the sort of business that you're into. It has a very clever fall detection system, so if the bike goes 30 degrees out of vertical, the Pika Boost detects that you've been in some kind of fall or an accident and cuts the power. It has a very clever anti-slip detection system as well, so if the Pika Boost detects that the little friction wheel on the back here isn't making proper contact with your tyre, it will cut the power and even lift the, uh, the friction wheel off the tyre so you can just ride back as a normal bike. It has a very clever regenerative power system as well, so when the bike's freewheeling, this little friction wheel is actually charging the battery on the Pika Boost. It even has some lights on the back of the unit. So there's a red tail light, which turns into a brake light, obviously when you're braking. And there's even some nifty little indicators for when you're turning. So that's the basic information today about the Pika Boost. But what's it like to actually ride? Well, I'm out today just riding my local area. I've got the Pika Boost installed. And the riding that I'm doing today is only going to be using the assistance mode. I'm not going to use the eco mode because that's more or less the same as the assistance mode, but it just cuts in on the hills. And I'm not going to use the free cruise mode for obvious reasons. So at the moment, I'm just riding along a road that's kind of just going a little bit downhill and I can already feel that the Pika Boost is giving me assistance. Not a massive amount I have to say. Just on a little climb now having to go through the gears 
Um, I can certainly feel that it's making the bike a little bit heavier. Um, but yeah, it is giving a tiny amount of assistance, not a lot. Uh, I thought it would be a little bit more, if I'm brutally honest. I can feel that the motor is fairly responsive and the assist that it's giving me is pretty smooth and even, so no problems are there. Again, I'm riding on a stretch of roads that I know is just ever so slightly downhill. So it, it is pretty easy, but then it's pretty easy normally without the uh, assist of the Pika Boost. Obviously, I will need to try it on some flatter roads and going up a, a slight climb. I'm now on a flat road and I can feel the Pika Boost is giving me some assist. But I've ridden plenty of e-bikes in my time to know that it's not quite as powerful as one of those. But then I suppose, to be fair, you wouldn't expect it to be. They have hub motors or crank motors. And this is just a little friction wheel on the back, just trying to add a little bit of assistance. So, let's just do a turn here. So still on this flat road. And let's see if I can increase the power with the remote control. So let's hit the up shifter. And I'm not feeling any difference at all. And that is either suggests that it's not working or I've installed it wrong. But to be honest, there's not really much you can do with the remote controller. You just attach it to the handlebars and it should work. Okay, just pulling away from a junction there and um, I can feel that the the motor didn't cut in quite as quickly as I would have liked on a very slight climb now maybe one percent although I can feel the peak boost is is assisting me I'm still having to work quite hard to get up this climb. Let's go down again. Climb's ramping up a little bit now. Might be three or four percent. And uh, yeah, working quite hard again. This is a slightly tougher climb yet again. This is about five, six percent. And again, <laughs> I can feel the peak boost just doing something, but again, being brutally honest, I don't think it's any better than riding this bike without it. So getting slightly objective for a moment, what's my opinion of the peak boost? Well, I'll be honest and say that it's not probably something that I'd be interested in, particularly as I'm going up this next little climb here and <laughs> finding it equally as hard. Um, but that said, I am a fairly heavy rider and maybe it's not really designed for people like me. So if you're a lighter rider, you might feel the assistance a little more. But don't just take my word for it. I'm just one person reviewing this unit. There are plenty of other people out there doing very similar reviews. And if you're considering 
buying one of these Pika Boosts, then it makes sense to, to listen to several other reviews, not just mine. After all, you know, it might just be that um, I am a bit too heavy for this and, and it's struggling to give me the assistance that it would normally give a much lighter rider. And that said, if you'd like some more information about the Pika Boost 2, I'll leave a link to the Lival website in the description below. And you can go along there and find out all about it. In the meantime though, thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next one.